Hey, what's up, everyone? Sean here at Blue Ridge Silver Island. Hope everyone's having a great evening. Um, hopefully, you guys are also enjoying the hobby. The hobby is going to be something to keep an eye out on here uh, as we approach the holiday season. You know, it's uh, it's about this time every single year that I talk about how everyone should be prepared um, to, to get out there and do some hunts. Um, whether that's at coin shows or just simply going to your bank and getting some bank rolls. I talked about the, uh, the star note production run coming to an end. And, uh, some people thought I, I was, uh, I was being serious and I'm very serious. The federal reserve announcement came out May of last year and during that same video, I had pointed out that it was going to be 24 months before a complete and total phase out of print note production or star note production. Sorry, I can't even think as late at night, even though it's only 6.38 in the evening in my time. Um, the Federal Reserve, uh, the BEP, had announced that with these this new non-sequential piece of machinery, it's not going to be a complete and total shutdown of star note printing, but they were still going to be printing those on the old machines and that it was going to be about 24 months uh, before they completely phase it out. And they're going to take the, um, they're just going to use the, the new LEPE presses, the non-sequential ones exclusively. And uh, it's going to be all over, man. It's going to be incredibly tough and difficult, number one, to find star notes because now there's going to be a real reason to save them, right? Uh, e even just a raggedy old $1 bill, star note, 3.2 million production run. By the way, you could go on mycurrencycollection.com to look at the print run of your star note if you do find one. Uh, but what's, what's that also going to do to the, uh, the duplicate star notes of 2013B? Well, I would expect that they are going to get insane, they are going to be insane, uh, collectability-wise, not only for the singular notes, but for the matched pairings of the DC and Fort Worth notes that are found. Um, so, I'm telling you, I, I mean, we are 15 months into a 24-month, what, what is kind of, I, I guess, final call, last call, like if we were in a bar, you know? Last call to get your drinks in. It's uh, it's two a.m. and we're gonna be closing here in about five minutes. Um, yeah. So it, it's strange, strange that that people would say, "No, you're lying, Blue Ridge." Uh, I'm like, "Nope, I'm not going to a Federal Reserve website." They had a press release, a news announcement that they had made in May of last year, two thousand twenty-three. The the news is not new, but. To a lot of people, it's like new news. And then when the news comes out, and then a good old-fashioned YouTube content creator that doesn't work for Fox News or CNBC or ABC or anything like that, you know, it's like, oh, we don't believe you anyways. So, you know, you're no different than, than regular mainstream news. I'm like, okay, well, uh, enjoy your life, I guess. Uh, but anyways, you know, I, I had to bring that up because it was like a little point of contention you know, from, from my video. Um, and it just blows my mind. I, all, all good things come to an end. And what I'm saying, you know, be on the lookout, be on the lookout, B O L L, um, because those notes are going to be desired. Um, you know, I would say 10, 20 years from now, when you're ba barely able to find one of them, can you imagine 10 years from now? And it's like, it's going to be a chore just to find one star note. Uh, get, given the life cycle of, of a dollar bill these days and how, how they barely last like 18 months uh, from, from what the, um, uh, the data uh, suggests. Uh, man, it, it's... It's going to be crazy. And, and then how much are the star notes going to sell for? They're going to be like $20 a note. doesn't matter what it is. You know, it's kind of like the um, the good old uh, web notes back in 1988 and 91 and 93 and, you know, all the other years that they released those. Those notes today are like 25 bucks a pop. But 
you know, back 35 years ago, they, they were kind of, you know, all over the place. Even I found some of them. I found some of them at the time. You could sell them for like two bucks. You know, I got double my money back. And star notes were pretty prevalent as well. Um, but, you know, it's it's kind of crazy that we're in this reflection point uh, of, you know, the end of something. And then we're trying to figure out if it's truly the end or if this is just kind of like a false alarm thing. I mean... It kind of brings back, what was it, 2009, 2010, Canada uh, deciding that they were going to do away with the one cent production. Uh, so all the uh, the pennies ended up be, being uh, disappearing. They're disappearing. There were there are no more new Canadian cents. Uh, and the same goes for this. So... Um, yeah, just gonna pay a little tribute to the star notes. Uh, hold on to them as you come and find them. Hold on to them. Um, so, someone had asked me, says, so you mean to tell me that the the high production run um, circulated star notes, I should just send those to the bank, right? Because the only ones that are going to be worth money are going to be the new fresh BEP packs. I, I didn't say that. You know, as a matter of fact, I firmly believe that, you know, if you had a hundred circulated star notes, it doesn't matter what the print run is. I'm going to assume that they're all going to be 3.2 million. Um, those are going to, they're, they're going to go up as well. All the rising tide, you know, raises all the ships collectively. So, it, you know, whether it's a singular star note, doesn't matter what it is. If you had a bunch of circulated notes, and you wanted to sell them, sell them online, whether it's eBay or Facebook or somewhere else. Um, the prices are just going to go up. Uh, that's a foregone conclusion. Uh, you know, when something, when, when there's, when there's rarity and some sort of capacity that comes up in the conversation, it's going to, it's it's going to attach some sort of monetary. Uh, thing to that item you know there's going to be what do you want for it it's either gonna be money or you gotta make a trade uh there's gonna be more uh more enhanced value on, on that well above face value than there ever was all right so i wanted to bring that up to kind of kick things off and another thing too i've been doing a lot of videos on, on ebay right and uh, you know as a way of kind of connecting with my viewers um who um who want to start a business on eBay and uh, want to know more about how to get started. I, you know, I don't know if you guys saw my video from the other day where I actually walked through how to create a listing if you were selling a coin. I also talked about photos and how important that was. Um, someone from that video said um, the fees on the fees to sell on eBay are absolutely ridiculous. Don't know how anyone makes any money besides eBay themselves. Well, if you're selling at a loss every single time and you're not, you're not managing, uh, your costs and your, your profits, your net profits, you know, and the fees, if you're not managing it like a business, of course, you're going to lose money. You know, um, we, we, we don't think too much of it. We, we want to sell on eBay, but what does that look like, you know, to a normal person, Who's who's never, you know, ne never ran um, a, a sole proprietorship or an LLC, or you know, working for a company where you're an accountant or a bookkeeper or a, uh, uh, you know, the guy that sits there and punches on the uh, the tan key uh, all day long trying to manage costs. If you've never done it before, you know, it, it's it's some work, but at the same time, people underestimate the importance of managing the the uh, the costs of things that you own to resell in comparison to how much you really do sell for all right when it comes to a lot of things these days okay pe people kind of um and this will segue into something else that's pretty uh, it was one of those things that didn't quite make my day but i'm gonna talk about it anyways um People firmly believe that the fees have to be incredibly tiny, if not free, 
you know? Um, it's like the Joker, the, the other uh, um, YouTuber that does paper money uh, that, that clearly says that I shouldn't be charging $60 for a one-hour consultation. I'm like, why? Isn't that my worth? You know? Uh, for, for 13 years, I've been giving out free content because that's the narrative I've, I've pulled out there for 13 years, that that's all I'm worth, you know, is, is free content for the people. Um, no, I, I, fuck that. <laughs> That's bullshit. You know, I, I, I have a whole lot more worth and self-worth to understand that I can charge whatever the hell I want to charge to do a consultation. All right. Now, granted, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not, you know, any of these guys that, that have, uh, you know, these egregious $500 per hour type, type fares, you know, but I'm telling you, when when when, I, when the consultations come about and there are talking points, you'll you'll notice when you look in the description box, my consultation link is no longer there um, because I don't get a lot of consultations. I really don't. I, I get maybe two a year, but this guy seemed like that. I I get like fifty a month, you know. And that's completely not true. I mean, if you don't know the whole fucking story, why even bring it up? Um, sorry, I'm a little salty about that. I'm, I'm a little salty about a few things here today. But what, one of the biggest um, topics of conversation in a consultation is how to build your eBay store. It's an incredibly kind of like admin heavy type of duties that 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 have to put it all in line on an eBay store okay and part of that is managing the books yeah you, you gotta manage the cost of the goods that you buy before you sell them on there because if you don't do all this stuff you are surely not going to make money and the only thing that's going to blind you is that 13.9 percent fee that eBay charges you while it's 100% worth it. As a matter of fact, they're actually undercharging for using eBay services. Okay, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the numbers. Okay, as a matter of fact, I'm going to type it in. I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to make up some bullshit about uh, how many people shop on eBay in a year. I'm just going to... 159 million people, okay, shopped on eBay in 2021. Uh, in 2022, 138 million. So the number dropped a little bit. And um, as of the first quarter of 2024, eBay had 132 million active buyers, which was the same number as the previous year. In 2023, they had 132 million as well. All right, so... It doesn't matter how you slice it. That's a lot of damn people. It's the biggest audience that you'll ever have on a platform. Do you remember back in the 90s when you had to pay for advertising? Or as a business, you were ready to do that. Uh, they, they call it direct mail campaign. You know, you remember back in the day, and even to this day, you get like the uh, the cards or the, the circulars that are made on like newsprint. Um, about your business, some of the things that you sell. You know, you see uh, car dealership ads and all that great stuff on there. Only they come to your house uh, and they actually have your physical address with your name on there or current resident. That's direct mail. That's a campaign that you have to go to a mail house or a printing company to produce. Do you guys understand how freaking expensive that is? If, if you had to do a direct mail campaign to a medium-sized city of about 50,000 people, it's going to cost anywhere from $38 to about $1.50, $1.50 per person in that town in order to fulfill a full direct mail campaign for the city. Let's think of a city that has 50,000 people. Carson City. Carson City has about 50,000 people, residents that live in that city. I'm from that area, so I, I know. Uh, it's probably a little bit higher, you know, with all the transplants from California, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, but back in the day, 
you know, you were spending easily on a direct mail campaign. And usually this is like, it's event based. Every time you have a significant event that comes up, it's a direct mail. You got to do a direct mail campaign for Labor Day weekend sale, for Memorial Day weekend sale, for the holidays, for Mother's Day, for, you know, the great big summer clearance sale or whatever it is, right? A direct mail campaign, unfortunately, by, by around 2005, because I worked in the print industry and I helped fulfill tons of direct mail campaigns were coming to an end. Things were kind of waning down around that period. Um, and the big reason why was because the internet was taking over as that component that fulfilled that. All right. So you can imagine if you had to pay for advertising on eBay, in addition to the 13.9%, because you get to use their their back end, you get to use their, their interface, you get to use what is essentially the easiest plug and play system to list your items and it gets it out there, you, you know, for, for people to see. Keep in mind, it's a 130 million plus people that can have access to your items. Now, is it reasonable to have all 130 million to look at your items? No. But when you have that many people spread out across the entire bandwidth, across the entire platform, you're guaranteed lots of views. On any given day, when I list something that's, that's in coins or bullion, I get hundreds of views. Hundreds. You know, and then back in the day, to have that kind of conversion rate on a direct mail would have been a friggin' pipe dream. All right? So... When we're, when we're analyzing the cost of a service, you have to see the value in the service in order for it to be worth it. If you don't see that, that's going to be a fucking rip off to you. You know, it's one of the things that as a content creator, as a realist who's been in e-commerce, because I've also done the Amazon thing. Uh, I've done eBay since uh, since 2001, you know, really close to, to the beginning of the platform. Uh, I've been in the print industry. I've worked it for Offset Print. I've done direct mail, advertising, banners, things like that for, uh, for over a decade and a half. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now, I mean, you're not going to have it any easier than you do right now. Okay, to try try building your own website from scratch and trying to figure out for the life of me, for the life of you, how you're going to get traffic through your website organically at day one. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen the way you want it to. It's, it's not easy for you to put up a contracting service. You know, hip hip hooray, I, I got my license to be a contractor, you know, to do... Uh, to do anything and everything. And it's like, okay, well, you got to get your name out there. How are you going to do that? You know, if you're not doing work already for people, you know, there's no word of mouth there. So you can't, you can't do that. So you have to organically build up from the bottom and people, and it just blows my mind. Every time they start eBay, there, there's like, there's like a good, out of a hundred percent of the people I talk to about a third of them have like serious gripes about, the fees and not selling anything and all that stuff. And it's just, you're not ready. You know, you're not ready because you don't have the education. You didn't do enough of the legwork to get to that point. So it, it's just, it boggles my mind how that happens, but it's never going to change. You know, there is going to be some things that will change and people are resistant to change naturally, but it's inescapable. You know, it's going to be, there's going to be a day when eBay makes an announcement. Well, we're going to have to adjust the price of our fees. It's going to be 14.9% from this point forward. And they might do it on a few different categories, automotive here and then over here to collectibles or whatever. Um, because I don't know about you guys. I, I get notifications all the time from eBay letting me know that the post office is going to be raising rates. And because of that, the rates that you're going to see on, on the website for eBay, when you go to uh, process packages, things that have sold, you're going to see that rate go up. 
you know? And it, you have to micro adjust when you do your future listings, you have to micro adjust your shipping rate a little bit higher to account for the change in the post office's rates. It, it just happens. It just happens. But people love to sell at their own terms. Whereas back in the day, you know, you had to call the Washington Post, the local newspaper, or whoever it was, New York Times, and say, yeah, I, I want to list my, you know, my 1985 Ford Ranger with 210,000 miles. I, I want to list that uh, on the uh, the next newspaper. And then they're like, okay, it's going to be $99.99, you know, and then we'll run it for two weeks concurrently. And you're like, damn, that's expensive. You know, I only want eleven hundred dollars for the truck, right? So, you know, you look at it back. It's like the the speed in which the advertising happens is just way too slow. It takes days. Now these 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 days, it takes moments because when you're doing it online, when you're on the e-commerce world, the internet world, it's so much quicker to to get there. So, I, I wanted to bring that up. You know, that that was again. Um, <laughs> It's not the first time that I've seen a comment like that where the fees get dogged. But again, you have to see the value of what they offer to justify the fees. Because if you don't see that, then you're SOL. You know, you'll you'll never make it as someone doing e-commerce. Um, because no one else in their right mind today is going to give you anything cheaper. They just won't. Because there's a, uh, there's a bar that's been set, you know, by uh, uh, Shopify eBay and all these companies, uh, Amazon, um, you know, to, to where it's palatable across the board. Uh, but one is not more cheaper than the other because it's going to make the other ones kind of like adjust. And they're like, nope, we're in a good space right now. Um, so from here, uh, final point, uh, I had someone that reached out to me on email, email and we've been go going back and forth. It's been very contentious. I'm like, what the hell is going on with this chick? Um, so... I, I'm just going to use Diana. It's very close to that name, but we're going to use Diana. Um, Diana had messaged me as, and, and I get this. So these are unfortunate emails and uh, it sucks. And it's like, you know, it's, it, it puts me in a tough spot as a create content creator and kind of a subject matter, matter intermediate expert, I guess, um, where they reach out to me, Diana reached out to me and said, I, I'm having a really hard time right now. I have a bunch of medical bills I need to cover and I need to sell a lot of these coins I have. And, um, it's not that they were bad coins. She had a, a pretty decent mix. You know, she even had a couple Carson city Morgans in there and, uh, she needed the money like yesterday, you know, this, so let me kind of set the stage for a timeline. So she emailed me two days ago. Uh, so what was that? Uh, it was like Monday morning or something. So like day and a half or whatever. And um, she 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 was uh, I guess gonna have surgery if I remember right. I don't have the email up, uh, but I know enough of the details to to kind of talk about. It. So she was gonna have surgery. She didn't have insurance. She needed. Uh, excuse me. She needed the money right away um, to help cover some of that. And she had, at first glance, you know, she had probably three, four thousand dollars in stuff, you know, retail. Um, but she was she wanted me to help sell it for her. And I'm like, well, I don't do that anymore. All right. I just don't have the time to to do consignments. Um, there are other people that do consignments, you know, but they have a team. They have a dedicated team. That could help help sell for you on eBay and things like that. And they'll take a percentage, you know. And it's like, okay, yeah, what, whatever, that's fine. But, you know, she wanted me to do it. I'm like, I don't do those anymore. I just don't have the time to dedicate to it. And I'm not going to be able to fulfill a level of service that you expect. So I was very forward, forthcoming with her. Told her all the facts. I told her I couldn't do it because of X, Y, Z. Um, and it's not that I wasn't being unreasonable. I wasn't. I, because I said, no, it doesn't mean that I didn't want to do it because I didn't like the person or it's just like they have shitty stuff or something like that. It had nothing to do with that. You know, I don't discriminate when it comes to, um, the type of material that they need to sell because, you know, if there's any value to be had, we're going to make sure that we uncover everything. 
that comes with that. Um, but she got like insta like batshit crazy, man. She she was uh she was telling me, oh, so you're not gonna do it for me? So I guess you know what everybody is saying is true that you, you know. Um, that, that you're not very useful in helping people sell their coins and yada, yada, this and that. Uh, and it put it, it, I didn't message her back right away, you know, because I, I needed to take a moment to just kind of like think about how I would respond to her. And, and eventually I did, I did. I'll tell you right now. 20, uh, like 29 minutes ago, almost half an hour. All right. Almost half an hour. Like it was right before I got on this video. This video is like 25 minutes long right now. And I just felt like, okay, I needed to talk about this. Um, I, I ended up messaging her back. I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I cannot do this for you. I had done a video. I even put the link of the video, like, if it came down to it and you needed the money yesterday, and that's that's her words too. She said, I kind of needed the money yesterday. You know, I told her, I'm like, um, the best course of action is to find a coin shop, a coin dealer that's nearest you. And she's out in the Midwest. It's not going to be too big of an issue to find a coin shop. You know, she's like closer like Chicago or something like that. But I told her, uh, like at this point, you know, if you're looking for fast, quick money right now, look no further than a local coin shop. You know, they, there's a number of them in your area. I even told her that, you know, I even gave her the, uh, there's a directory um, online. I, I believe it's on the a, a website that you could go to, to find reputable coin dealers. Um, you know, I told her, you know, that's what you need to do. All right, and then they're going to be fair and equitable, but at the same time, just to let you know, this is going to be the way to get your money the quickest, but you're going to be paid the less, the least. So it's not too terribly bad, all right? When something like that occurs and you have to give someone that kind of information, it's not like they're getting like 10% of what the value is of their coins. You know, it might end up being 80, 85%, you know, because there's gray sheet prices and then coin dealers typically go a little bit underneath that. So there's going to be a fair amount of her things that she'll be able to cash out on and make easily a couple thousand dollars. And that's not including all the other stuff that probably a dealer won't buy, you know, like she has these little two by twos, you know, that have kind of like, you know, minor errors or errors that don't really exist, you know, like the L on rim. She actually had a few of those on there. Um, yeah, I'm not doing this to spite her by any by any means, but it's like she uh, she got she got pretty nasty with me in her last email, um, calling me a fraud. She she actually called me a fraud, um, you know. And she said, "Yeah, you're no better than uh, a few of the other." You know, um, she actually likes Daniel Malone, uh, but she said, "Yeah, you're no better than like couch collectibles." And she even brought up Akusha. Are you kidding me? Akusha is like one of the, he's a young guy, but I'm telling you, Akusha is one of the more trusted coin dealers out there for his age. I, I shit you not. He has some really, really beautiful pieces and he's not shy about buying collections. He's very forthcoming and straight. He is straight as an arrow when he's talking about, you know, collections and coins and uh, the business. He knows his stuff, you know? Uh, the same way like Christian from uh, Treasure Town is also another stand-up guy that does a lot of ancients and stuff. They're just people that surprise the hell out of you because they're like young and they're starving and they're pit bulls, you know. Um, uh, and she brought up Akusha and then one other person. I don't know who it was. They were like, yeah, you guys are all frauds. I don't believe any of you, you know. Uh, I'll have to reach out to Daniel. <laughs> I'm like... He's a coin dealer. You know, I think he, I think he's in the Midwest. He's like in Ohio or something like that. So that's that that couldn't be a better option for you. So, you know, of course she's going to be talking smack uh, all the way down to, you know, to, to the end of the yellow brick road. Uh, but, oh my gosh, um, the things I go through, you know. Um, 
just so everybody understands, it, it's not that I don't want to help. It's just I don't have the capability to help. You know, the capability equal sign time. I just don't have time. I have a family. I got two kids. I got two dogs. I got I got a wife who, thankfully, I love her so much, is not the demanding type. So she's she's a true gem, man. But you know, when I'm forward and honest about availability, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, you know, that's not gonna make me say yes. It might 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 piss me off to a point where I'm just gonna just, you know not talk to you anymore, you know, um, ghost you, right? That's what they call it, ghosting. <sighs> so that's been kind of my day in a nutshell, you know, and i also been doing a lot of shipping from my whatnot show from last night and a bunch of eBay sales. I have like 40 packages <laughs> I need to do from eBay. Uh, see, it's working. I'm selling shit on eBay. Yeah, and I'm actually doing okay, making money. Um, try it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about the fees. The fees, there that's the cost of doing business. Um, but yeah, uh, the few things I wanted to bring up, and they all kind of like culminated on this fine Tuesday. It was such a great day, by the way. It this this doesn't phase me any because I'm still gonna go downstairs and cook dinner. You know, I'm gonna do it with a smile too. So I hope I didn't take too much of your guys' time. Uh, it was kind of a day. We all have those. I love you guys. Thank you for all your reviews and support. Diana, a.k.a. Da, 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 um, you know, no hard feelings. I hope you find someone that will that will buy your, your items right away. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Well, I'm out of here, guys. You guys have a good one. And I will see you on the next coin video. There is always going to be another one. Peace.